Hello everyone, this is Callie Raspuzzi, the Collections Manager here at the Bennington Museum, welcoming you back to another Tour of Ten. Today, we are going to be talking about underwear, specifically women's underwear from the 1830s. This particular corset and chemise were worn by a local woman, um, Mrs. Susan Dyer Spencer Monroe, who lived up in Shaftesbury, Vermont. And underwear is one of those really interesting and, I think, under, under understood um, parts of women's costumes because we think about the changing silhouette of the woman's figure throughout the 1800s, throughout the Victorian age, and it, it changes drastically. In the early 1800s, if you think about your Jane Austen movies, women are wearing these long flowing gowns that are fairly close fitting, a little bit layered. They have these great big puffed sleeves and these bell shaped skirts. And then you get the really kind of wasp figure um, with the really pinched waist and very close fitting bodices. So underwear is how all of that happened. So this, in the 1830s, the late 1830s, when this um, set were made, the ideal woman's figure was not particularly curvy. It was very straight, it was very slender and the um, earlier stays were from the 1700s were very stiff. They had um, ribs of whalebone, of baleen from a whale's mouth that were sewn into the, the stays to make them very stiff and to hold you very, very erect. Um, the corsets in the 1830s were quite different. They're all fabric. They don't have the boning that the earlier stays do or that the later corsets do either. What they do have is they have gussets for the chest and then there's a little sleeve through the middle here. And this is where you would have put in a thin um, wooden or whalebone or steel busk. And that would have, first of all, helped to keep you very straight and upright. And it also, they were sometimes called divorcers because they helped to lift and separate the chest. So that would give you a very specific outline and a very specific um, silhouette that matched the fashion for the 1830s. And one of the other things that's quite interesting, I think, about this particular corset is that on the back, the um, grommets here are ivory. And that allows a couple of things. The earlier corsets were um, did not have these little grommets, so you couldn't really lace them all that tightly, but because they were so stiff, you didn't necessarily need to. Um, with the later corsets uh, in the 1850s and 1860s, they have um, steel grommets, and you can lace those even tighter. But this one, and since this is on a mannequin, not an actual human form, it, it doesn't look exactly the way that it should. So it buckles a little bit here and here. When Susan wore this, it would have fit her figure much better than it fits the mannequin. Um, but then it's laced um, back and forth as you see here. Um, there's an interesting myth that kind of goes along with corsets and tight lacing. And if you've ever uh, read Gone with the Wind or seen the movie, Scarlett O'Hara brags about having this 18 inch waist. She was the only woman in the county with an 18 inch waist. And Susan here was obviously a very slender woman too, but most of the corsets in our collection have at least a 20 inch waist, if not more, and they're worn quite open on the back, so they're not really laced um, quite as tight as they could be. And most women, when they wore these for every day, wore them quite loose as well. So really this is something that provides support for the figure, but doesn't necessarily reduce the waist. And no matter how tightly you were to lace a corset like this, it's not going to reduce the waist, and that's not what it was meant to do. It was meant to simply smooth the figure into something more column-shaped, not to give you a pinched waist. So what Susan would have looked like with this is something like this painting here, and here she is. Now, this is her, um, one of her first-born children. This is probably Paul Hume Monroe, who was born in, um, around 1938, 39. And so after she was married, she would not have been wearing a corset like this during pregnancy or shortly after childbirth when she was nursing. So here she is with her baby. She's 
certainly not wearing that. And I suspect that that is why her corset here is in such good condition today because it is not something that she wore after she was married and um, immediately became pregnant and had several children who, who um, followed shortly after that. So this is something that she wore when she was very young and was still slender and um, had a, an ideal figure for the time.